Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. Part 14, setting up the Walsh Arts valve gear and making the engine run properly. If you've been following this series, you will know that the engine's already been shown running, but initially it didn't run very well at all. So in this video I'm going to show how you set Walsh Arts valve gear to make an engine run much better than it did originally. When I was editing the last video, I did notice though that I hadn't tightened up these brackets, so the first job to do before I forget is to tighten them up. And once again, I'm using one of these excellent spanners from Blackgates Engineering. There's nothing quite like these small spanners. They can get into very small spaces where you can't get other types of spanners in. What I'm about to do is remove the steam chest cover. The engine sat on the rolling road so it's easy to rotate the wheels. And one by one, I remove the small nuts from the top of the steam chest. But in quite a few cases, the entire studs are coming out, which is no big problem. It is if all of the studs come out, because I don't want the bottom part of the steam chest to be moved. But as it turned out, there were more than sufficient studs going all the way down into the steam cylinder casting to hold the steam chest in the right position. I can't really advise on the best way or not the best way to remove studs from a steam chest. A socket seems like a good idea because it speeds it up. My only real advice though is don't lose the nuts and don't lose the studs. Put them in a safe place. Using the socket method to remove these studs was fine apart from the one right on the corner. So once again I had to use my small black gate spanner. And before I get any comments, yes I do realise that this is advertising for Blackgates Engineering, but it's my channel so I can do that and they are friends of mine. As usual this video is not set up or staged, I'm actually doing the job as you watch it. And to break the seal between the steam chest cover and the steam chest, first of all I very carefully used the craft knife blade, which I carefully tapped in to break the seal. Then I used a small screwdriver to open up the gap, and finally the craft knife blade again, to remove parts of the old gasket that was sticking to both surfaces. I've mentioned this before, but this small engine is not the best engine in the world, but it's very well engineered, and the holes in the steam chest cover were just a clearance fit for the studs, and it was reluctant to part company with the steam chest, but at last it did. At this point I should be saying, oh look at the state of this, but no, this is entirely normal, nothing wrong with this at all. This is generally what it looks like inside a steam chest. The main thing is the port face is in great condition. So that's a good thing, I don't need to strip it down any further. The slide valve assembly is very well made as you can see. And in this clip I'm using some tissue paper to just clean out part of the steam chest, mainly for the video so that you can see what's happening. Please note the slide valve is not a tight fit inside the carrier and it's not meant to be, it needs to float so that when steam is admitted to the steam chest, the pressure of steam holds the slide valve against the ports. What you can't see at the moment is, I'm rotating the wheels, and I'm watching what happens. I'm currently seeing how far out the timing actually is. I'm looking at the piston when it reaches top dead centre, and just before it reaches top dead centre, the slide valve should uncover the port. This, however, is not the case. The adjustment is wrong on this particular slide valve. If you're doing this job, here's a good tip. Put some oil into the steam chest as you make the adjustment, and then you will precisely be able to see when the port is uncovered. But then if you're going to make a video about it, you need to remove some of this oil. The general situation is pretty similar to the way you set up Stevenson's link. Walshart's valve gear works slightly differently. The combination lever that you've just seen me disconnect from the valve spindle acts as a time delay which holds the valve open slightly longer before it travels back in the opposite direction. And this allows maximum admission of steam to each end of the cylinder before the slide valve moves to exhaust the other side of the piston. Taking model engineering to the next level with John at the steam workshop and John's not having a good day today. As I've mentioned before, this 7 and a quarter 464 locomotive was built in 1912 and when it was dismantled the parts were not marked up, so it's anybody's guess where they go. And it even took John quite a long time to figure it out, but he got there in the end. I have to make a gasket now. I've cleaned up the steam chest cover, first of all in the bead blasting machine, then I finished it off by hand with some emery cloth. And there's nothing new or difficult here, I've described it many times. I didn't use the ink pad method because that's at home in my workshop. I simply drew around the steam chest cover on a piece of gasket material, 
and then drilled down through the holes to make a hole in the gasket material. What I need to do though is cut out the centre of this gasket material. So I just drew some pencil lines on it again. And then I found this knife which was very blunt, but luckily it's one of those where you break off the blade and start with a clean bit. And I'm forced to admit it is much better than the scalpel that I use in my workshop. So in future, provided that I can find the one that I have in the workshop, I think I'll be using that to cut out the holes in the centre of gaskets from now on. In this clip, I'm gently tapping the steam chest cover into place using a piece of brass bar. So before any viewers write in with the immortal words, you don't want to do it that way, you want to do it this way. I would normally use a hammer to tap the brass, but the hammers at the steam workshop are very large, and I don't really want to smash the cylinder off the frames. When working on miniature items, I do like to use lots of hammer blows very lightly rather than less hammer blows very heavily. As we're all aware, assembly is the reverse of disassembly or vice versa, so now it's time to put it all back together. This is a very routine job, there's not a lot I can say about it. I'm using the socket driver in exactly the same way as I did originally. You will occasionally see me tapping the stud into the hole with the piece of brass. That's because it has to go through the gasket material and the hole in the gasket material is just the right size. So I'm just going to get on with it. And while I'm showing this rather mundane part of the rebuild, I'd like to tell you about a comment that I got from a viewer. This man calls himself Projects Projects and surprise surprise when I looked at his channel, it says, this channel doesn't have any content. Anyway, Mr. Projects Projects wrote, I wouldn't let any who used a press steel spanner even touch anything of mine. And I replied to him, well, I wouldn't want to touch yours anyway. First of all, they aren't press steel spanners, they are laser cut spanners, and just for the benefit of Mr. Projects Projects, here's where he can get them from if he needs to buy a set. Another viewer commented that he was a bit disappointed that Blackgates didn't have things in the catalogue. Yeah, I know about this. Blackgates are a bit of a cottage industry and part of the internet side of things leaves a bit to be desired. Hopefully at some time in the future that will change, but all you have to do for the moment is send them an email stating your requirements and then they will process the order and everything will be fine. Blackgates Engineering, by the way, currently don't have a licence to send things like paint and oil through the post. But for everything else, there's no problem at all. Here's another top tip. When you cut gaskets, leave them slightly oversized and then trim them off with a knife like this and you get a very neat finish. And it's also a good idea to rub the edge of the gasket off with some emery cloth like this. Now it's time for a very small amount of painting. It's not worth composing any music for this and I thought that just for a change, I would paint the top of the steam chests this nice light grey. Yes, that looks very attractive, it's not dissimilar to the colour of my beard. This is special etching primer, and it's really good stuff is this. I'll be doing a feature on the paint that Steam Workshop used very shortly. Now I have the return crank in what I consider to be the correct position. I'm making a very small centre punch mark, so if ever I remove it, I can put it back in the same place. So all I need to do now is just refit this nut onto the pin that holds the combination lever to the valve spindle. And guess what? My normal spanner wouldn't fit it. But guess which spanner fitted it perfectly? I rest my case. That's about it for this episode. I'm going to let the etching primer dry thoroughly before I give it a top coat of satin black. The Walsh Arts valve gear is perfectly adjusted, on this side anyway, because I think it's okay on the other side. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Oh sorry, I almost forgot, this is how the engine now runs.
it notches back nearly to centre. Near enough for rock and roll. As you can clearly see from this clip, it runs really well in forward gear and reverse gear, and you can notch back nearly to the centre. And that really is it for this episode. And with a bit of luck, eventually the paintwork for this engine will be all done, the cab and the tank and the boiler, etc. And I can put it all back together. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.